Welcome back to the to the NWEA Map Basics for Teachers, sponsored by the Oklahoma Public School Resource Center. My name is Jean Potter, and I will be your guide for this session. We're going to be looking specifically today at the Achievement Status and Growth Report, and more specifically at the one called the Summary with Quadrant Chart. So let's take a quick look at that one. This is what it looks like when I choose it. It looks a little different than what we've been looking for. This is a, an interactive report. I've chosen the name, the school name, the teacher name. I'm going to go with Mathematics 2 class for this one. And then I'm going to create the report. This is the report that pops up. I again, at the top, as usual, I can see teacher's name and class name. I can see terms tested, the number of weeks of instruction. And this is, once again, talking about two different tests and comparing growth and achievement. The report I'm looking at has four quadrants. It is, again, we'll look at how interactive it can be. The quadrant in the upper right, the green quadrant, talks about students with high achievement and high growth. So the students in this area have high achievement and high growth. The students in this orangish area show low achievement, but they are showing high growth. So there's a positive there. The students in the yellow area toward the bottom show high achievement, but they're not growing very much. So that could be a possible area of concern. Are we meeting their needs? And the students in the pink area have shown low achievement and low growth. So these are, we want our students to move from this area into one of the other quadrants, preferably here. If I want to know, see more information, I can show all of the students' names. To me, that makes it just way too crowded, so I'm going to take those back off. I can take the quadrant colors out if I want to do that. It makes it a little clearer to see some of the icons, but a little more difficult to see the differences. So I like to leave the colors on. I can, if it's too crowded, I can show only math or reading. So in this case, let's show reading. So I can uncheck all of the others. Now I only see the reading scores. I can show only female or only, excuse me, only male or only female. I can choose which ethnicities to show if that kind of data is something that you need to show. I can also change the point shapes if I need to so that I can see the different shapes. In this case, we've got the, the shapes sorted by, by subject. So if I want to look a little more closely at this, and let's say that I'm concerned about this student who showed no growth because up the, the side on the y-axis is the growth, x-axis is the achievement, showed no growth or very little growth, and, but, and not a lot of achievement. If I hover over that name, I can see that this is Ethan Ressler, and I can begin to think about what I would do to help Ethan. If I want to have even more information, I can click on this and find more information about this particular student, including the percentile, which we we're right about right. It was 15 percentile on achievement. Conditional growth percentile was only one. And projected growth and observed growth. And this would be a major area of concern. His projected growth was four. His observed growth was a negative 14. So he went down. And that could be, was it a bad test taking day? Or have there been other issues that I need to be aware of? the standard error for his observed growth and a conditional growth index, which is also very low. I probably don't want to show that information if I'm showing it to other people, so I can close that so it's not visible. If I want to stress to my students or to my staff that in order to get to achieve proficient on, say, my Oklahoma State test, I need my students need to have a, an achievement percentile of about 62, 62, I can move it up and this will give me a better idea of which students will probably achieve proficient or advanced on my state test. I can do the same thing for the growth percentile if I need that. I can also, for either of them, change it using this typing in the number. 
So I could put in a 65 for this and look at the difference in the way that the growth is. Let's put them both back down to the 50 so we can see about where average is. And again, I can bring back in the other results so that I could begin to see which students. So if I wanted to look where Ethan is here and see if I can find Ethan someplace else and see if maybe it was just a bad day for math or if it's something else. And I don't see Ethan anywhere else in this area. So we're not sure where Ethan is. I could show the student names and find him that way. Down below this in the less interactive part is the our, is a table that shows us the same information in table form. So we're going to be looking at that in our next session. Again, this is extremely interactive report. It's great for showing school boards or showing groups of teachers just where things are. It is only for one class at a time. So it shows results for two tests, but only for one, <clears throat> excuse me, for one class. Join us in the next session to look at the table that shows